This is Gwyn Allen Standridge. On June 11th, he pleaded guilty to a charge of murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Standridge's case falls into the category of domestic murders because he knew the person he killed. On March 29th, he and a friend were sitting in a car near an upholstery business that he ran on North Highland Avenue. Standridge pulled out a gun. He says his friend apparently thought he was going to use it on him. They struggled, his friend was killed, and Standridge took off for Tennessee. I was drunk, scared, panicked. The police found him and put him in jail, and he's been there since. Right now, he's in the Georgia Diagnostic and Classification Center. Murder has cost the 37-year-old Standridge his freedom, but he's been in jail before, once for armed robbery, and he says he can deal with it. He says he wishes the murder had not happened, but he says there was nothing he could do about it. He's accepted the event and its consequences. I don't uh, think of what I've lost as a rule, and I haven't given up hopes. Uh, I'll eventually be freed on this. Is it, uh, is it something that you find that you think about quite a bit? No. No. I've conditioned myself not to, because it had to happen, and it did. And I'm not going to, you know, let it bother me. And it will never bother me mentally if I had to spend the rest of my life in here. It would not bother you? Not mentally, no. Why is that? I refuse to let it be. I've conditioned myself otherwise. Standridge keeps busy and pursues his goal of having his sentence reduced. He takes courses, works 10 hours a day, seven days a week in the center's bakery. He expects that his sentence will be shortened, but the district attorney's office felt that the case warranted murder charges, nothing less, even though Standridge pleaded guilty. In a sense, Gwyn Standridge is a victim, a victim of his inability to control himself. The three people who died in this house on Virginia Place certainly were victims, and in a different sense, the neighbors here were also. There are many victims to every homicide, the ones we've taken a look at this week, the family of the person murdered and the problems they have in accepting what has happened, the neighbors whose own lives are disrupted, the police who have still one more case to solve, and all of us who may find ourselves more anxious, more afraid to be on city streets, and certainly more interested in the solution. We're just starting to look for a solution now. A lot of people are hoping that one can be found. For segment two, Paul Miller, Action News.